Welcome to Achieve Wealth through Value Add Real Estate Investing. This is the show where the guru hype is banned and you get direct insights from commercial real estate operators. If you're a passive investor, this show can help you better understand investment opportunities. And if you're an active investor, the lessons from each episode can help you to become more effective in your own deals. Now, here's your host, investor and author, James Kandasamy. Hi, this is James Kandasamy. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I appreciate you. I know I provide a lot of value through this podcast and I want you to share it with your friends, with your families and anybody else that you know that kind of benefit from listening to this kind of content. Go share it through Facebook, in through LinkedIn, through Twitter, through Instagram or any other channels that you want to share it because sharing is caring. Thank you. Let's go on with the show. Hey audience and listeners this is James Kandasamy from Achieve Wealth Through Value at Real Estate Investing Podcast. Uh, today is a very interesting show because uh, we're going to talk about all the flood zone and you know how can we take advantage of the flood zone properties or uh, you know any other things that we can do you know when you find a deal in a flood zone. So I have DJ McClure with me over here. Hey DJ you want to say hi to everyone? Hi everyone how are you? Thanks for listening. Good, good, good. So DJ is a director of uh, sales at National Flood Experts. Uh, they, you know, they help their clients uh, by adding millions of property value to the asset, which is very interesting for me. So because I, I know, you know, properties in flood zone sometimes have a lot of stigma and a lot of people don't want to touch it. And uh, so I'm, I'm even I'm interested to see what exactly DJ is going to be saying here because you know, um, you know, we look at a lot of properties and some of it in flood zone. Um, you know, so it's very interesting. So DJ, why don't you tell our audience about yourself and what do you do at a very high level? Then we can go into the basics of flood zone and we can go into what you actually do. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again for having me today. Um, DJ McClure, I'm director of sales and business development here at National Flood Experts. We are an engineering company primarily focused on properties and flood zones around the country. Um, Myself, I have a kind of an interesting background. I was a professional tennis coach um, after college for a number of years and then just transitioned more into a traditional business format, if you will. But, um, you know, I enjoy working with clients and, and solving problems. And that's how I uh, became a part of this organization several years ago. And so, you know, we take an interesting approach in just working with clients who have you know, in many cases, uh, flood insurance required from their lender because the property is, you know, fully or partially located in a flood zone. And so then we go into an audit process to identify, you know, what different solutions may be possible. If we can get the flood zone changed or, you know, if there's some other cost saving solution that we can do ultimately to help add some NOI to those deals. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go a bit more detail into that. So, so let's define what is a flood zone. Sure. So as, the, as FEMA works with the local floodplain management offices around the country, they determine which areas they feel are more high risk compared to others. Um, and then properties that are put within a hundred year flood zone, that is the stipulation in which a lender is going to then require flood insurance. And then you have varying types of zones uh, within the A category, which is what you see the most commonly. And then you have your coastal flood zones, uh, which can be a bit more expensive. And then you also have an X flood zone, which is considered to be the lower risk. Of course, any property in the country can flood, but from a lender requirement side, once a property is outside of the 100 year flood zone, it is no longer required by law to have flood insurance. So is that the X label flood zone that is not out of 100 years? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I have people asking me, what is this X? What is well, flood A? I think A and AE too, right? There's, there's another few more designation on flood zone. Yeah. AE is one of the more common flood zones that you see. It uh -huh. has an established base flood elevation. And uh -huh. then that's in turn combined with some elevation data from the properties. A lot of times where the insurance pricing originates. Got it, got it, got it. So let me clarify about flood zone because I know some of it because I know I have some, I've looked at a lot of properties and I think over one property, which is like, you know, there's one building touching it, right? So, so the flood zone, if it touches one building, then, you know, that's considered that property needs some kind of uh, flood zone insurance, I guess, right? 
Um, okay. Okay. And how do we know future flood zone? Because I got caught into this one property, which I was looking at. I was not aware that, you know, you know, when I'm looking at it, when I do my research right now, it's not in the flood zone, but when I went deeper into it, uh, I think one of my lender told me, Hey, it's not in flood zone right now, but it's going to be in flood zone in two months down the road. I said, how did that happen? Right. So there's a preliminary map that's going to be active two months down the road, which, you know, for the seller, it, it's, it's good for him because, you know, he's going to get, it, get rid of it before it becomes official. But for a buyer, if I didn't know about, I, I, about that, then I'm going to be buying it and later finding it after two months of closing, right? How do we, how do one know a preliminary, a preliminary flood zone that is not released to the public? I mean, there are some website, but I want to just listen from you. Yeah, that's a really good question. And we get that a lot from investors because, you know, you're trying to obviously load yourself with as much information in the acquisition process. And part of our process, anytime we review a property for a client, um, is looking in to see if there are any preliminary maps that are available. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are more public than others. And sometimes the publication date um, is more accurate than others. Um, for example, there's a lot of communities around the country that have, you know, if you will, an approved new flood revision. Um, but at various levels, you bring in different types of bureaucracy and approvals at the local and federal level. It can delay those, those maps from becoming uh, final. Here in Tampa, for example, on the Clearwater Beach side, they have had their maps uh, final and approved, uh, supposedly, since April of 2019 and the maps still have not finalized. You know, so there's a lot of people that are sitting in limbo because we know there's something coming and we know what the new map will be, but it's still not applicable currently. Yeah, so I think for the buyer, they have to be aware of that information, right? For the seller, you know, they hope no one knows about the new flood zone uh, determination, I guess. That's, a, that's the yeah. tricky part, I guess, right? So. It's a good detail to share is that those maps only change about every 10 to 15 years. Okay. So for the average investor, it's not something that is going to happen very often to where mm -hmm. you're in the process and then it may change immediately thereafter. Um, but again, you can pull the properties up onto FEMA's website, see what the current date of the flood map is. And if it's somewhere in the, in the past, you know, five to 10 years, you're probably not going to see a change, you know, anytime soon. Yeah. So do you guys work across the nation? We do. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like national flood experts. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So uh, let's go into the detail of, uh, you know, when you said you have a niche solution to increase the value of properties and floods. So let's go into details about that. So why not you tell us about how does that work? Sure. So our owner is a professional engineer. He started the company, um, both with a background as an engineer and then also having worked in the flood insurance industry. And so he just created a bridge between the two worlds uh, in terms of the knowledge bases. And then we've taken that knowledge and we apply it into our audit process. So we look at a property both from an engineering and a consulting side to see, okay, we're going to do a deep dive into the flood zone, into the data of the property, into the surrounding area to see if we have enough information to build a case to FEMA directly that this particular property should not be in the 100 year flood zone. In fact, we have data that says it should be in the X zone. And so from a lender standpoint, the flood insurance requirements are then removed and the investor has the option to keep or cancel the flood insurance, you know, either at a lesser cost or they can cancel and get a refund of their policies. And so, you know, that can add instant, you know, NOI to a deal. And then there's other scenarios where the properties don't qualify immediately for a flood zone change. And so then this is where our flood insurance expertise internally comes in. And so then we're evaluating these properties, getting into engineering based solutions um, that may in turn just reduce the cost of what they're paying currently. And so there's small details that can come into play, sometimes as small as a tenth of a foot on a certain data point can be worth you know, thousands of dollars a year on a single building. And so with multifamily where you have you know, 10, 20, 30 building complexes, if we're able to go in and find a solution that may even just save each building one to 2,000, the solution overall can add up quickly. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I, I can. Uh, I have a property which has like twenty over buildings, and only like four of it was in the was touching a flood zone. And I think there was a lot of research done to look at base elevation, right? I think uh, was that base elevation or there's something called a. Building, the, right. Yeah, there's a survey that they do to see you know how bad is it in the in a flood zone, right? And they say it was really not bad. So you know the flood zone, the flood insurance came really really small. Uh, is that what you're talking about in terms of looking at like base elevation, uh, doing surveys, and I'm sure you have a lot more tools. Uh, can we go through some of that that methods? I mean, um, at very high level, right? I mean, if it's it's proprietary, then I don't want to talk about it. But very high level. Well, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so we just get into all the data at a very granular level, both on the flood zone and the property. Uh -huh. um, but then in our experience, we start looking for just various possibilities that we could use to leverage. Uh -huh. some type of positive solution for the client. Uh -huh. And so some cases are more complex than others. Um, you know, like you're talking about where you only have four of your buildings where it may only touch a small corner of one of the structures, but from a lender standpoint, they're very black and white. You know, if their determination comes back that it's in an AE zone, uh, you know, their compliance is going to require that that flood insurance be in place. And so then if we can get the mandates removed, uh, then obviously that transfers to the next buyer. And that becomes one of the big value points of um, you know, getting the property out of the flood zone. Even if you continue to carry the flood insurance at a low cost, you know, you're looking at that from a finance standpoint that the next buyer is not going to have to take on the financial liabilities. Because as you're seeing on you know, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they're requiring a lot of excess flood requirements in some cases, and you know, the cost can, can increase very quickly. So that's the first thing that we look for. Um, and then having engineers internally uh, with licenses all over the country, it allows us to even send our team out to the properties if necessary. Because a lot of times we'll see situations that, um, you know, at the surface level may not look to be, um, you know, the most promising. But then we see situations and we see inconsistencies or holes in the information and we then suggest that we send one of our team out to the site to get some data at a closer detail. And so right now in about 80% of cases, to give you an idea, when we're sending our team out into the field, we're coming back with you know, some form of a cost saving solution. Got it, got it. And this solution makes more sense if you're already in the property which has a flood zone, right? I mean, you probably you're not aware of it, but now you got to know about it or you know, you were, you, suddenly you were put into a flood zone. Right? I mean, a lot of buyers, um, especially when they see big flood zone, they're very scared of the flood zone. They just don't touch the property at all, right? So maybe that time, I mean, there's not much of benefit unless it's a very, very highly desirable location and they want to do something for it, which, you know, they, they, they are the solution, I guess. And nobody want to touch it, but these guys have a solution. Maybe they hired you guys to come in and, you know, uh, implement that. You need to be somewhere where it's very highly valuable location. It's worth it, right? Rather than, you know, it's not like a property on the market where everybody's looking at it and you are trying to do something that everybody else do want to do about it, right? So, so I mean, am I right? I mean, in terms of the buyer perspective? You know, this is not something that's very commonly known, uh -huh. um, even within the real estate insurance industry that, you know, more properties will qualify than uh -huh. you might think. You know, mm. We're qualifying over 50% of properties that we look at around the country, mm. um, whether it just be some buildings or the entire property. But we work with a lot of investors during the acquisition process, even when they're just doing some of their preliminary underwriting. Um, you know, if you can have some type of competitive edge going into the deal. So here's a recent example. Uh, we had a property down in uh, Louisiana. And so this property had flooded in the past, the, the property knew they were going to maintain flood insurance after and into ownership. Um, but we had done an evaluation, we were able to actually get the flood zone changed. And so it took their cost from about 50,000 down to about 15,000. So they knew this going into the deal when they're making their offer, when they're doing the negotiation. And so it was powerful information they were able to use. And then we were able to get this completed and approved with FEMA before the um, closing took place and then this was able to then save them a huge cost and then obviously give them some leverage with their lender as well. Got it, got it, got it. Awesome, awesome. 
All right, DJ, thanks for coming into the show. Uh, why not you tell our audience how to get hold of you? Sure. So all of the property reviews that we do are, are no cost. You know, so we can look at anything within the portfolio um, or even anything that might be a prospective property. They're happy to email me um, at dj at nationalfloodexperts.com. And then they're happy to give me a call directly at 813-540-3493. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much for coming onto the show. Thank you very much. That's it for this episode. If you'd like to learn even more, check out James's free audio book. It's the audio version of his best-selling book on passive investing. You can get the audio book completely free along with other valuable resources by visiting www.achieveinvestmentgroup.com forward slash free audiobook. Also, be sure to join our Facebook group too. To find it, just do a Facebook search for Multifamily Investors Group. Thanks for listening. Join us again for another episode next week. See you then.